My great pleasure to be here today. Um, it's a privilege um, to share my recent experience in AI and machine learning with the audience. Um, my name is Joe um, from University of Manchester. Just before I kick off this uh, talk, I'd like to give you a question first. Um, how many people see in the audience actually working on AI in your daily work? Can you raise your hand if you do? Well, excellent. It's uh, almost half of the people in the audience. And the reason why I'm asking, because I want to know the answer another way around. Um, you know, so I have a very bad, very poor background in medical science and biology. I'm trying my best to, to convince you using my limited knowledge in the, um, medical science and biology. Hopefully, if you pick up any um, funny mistakes from my speech, um, from the perspective of biology and medical science, please to do and point it out. Thank you. And um, today, I'm going to share the artificial intelligence for identification of the blood cells. And um, what is the blood cell? Uh, blood test. And um, you're going to see this uh, first slide um, related to the blood test. I know a lot of people say, sitting in the audience, you have a strong background in the biology and medical science. I'm not going to say educating you here. In fact, I try to give you reminders of what we want to do is related to the blood test. Um, as you can see, then uh, for the blood test, you're going to check out uh, your um, general health conditions. Um, and also, you, sometimes you need to uh, check the numbers of blood cells. On the right hand side, I put out a couple of state images here uh, related to this uh, red blood cells and uh, place the red and then rise the blood cells and so on and so forth. This is show you the, what is the normal state, the shape of all these different cells, things like that. And also, then we wish to use the blood test in order to diagnose cancers and other diseases. And this is one of the purposes for the blood test. And on the left hand side, the bottom left hand side, you can just see this. Uh, um, I put on the uh, images that show you the two different cells. One is the uh, normal cells, the other is the uh, uh, cancer cells. As you can see, the body is uh, cancer cells. Um, usually, you can see um, either the, the cells are loose the structures or maybe just then um, lose the nuclei in the structure. Okay, this is a, give you some opportunity to see what happens in these cells and in this blood test. Later on, so we're going to link our technologies and um, this is the type of uh, introduction. And, and here's in this slide, I'm going to use to share the, our understanding of what is the blood smears under microscopy. And um, as you know, then for this uh, blood smear, um, we mainly looking for this uh, anomalous uh, events in the blood cells. On the right hand side, then I show you that there are quite a few images. And in one of the images, you can see, and um, we call this, uh, I think it's the, the, the final rows and the right hand side uh, smudge the cells. And in that the particular the image, you can see the one of the cells that doesn't have this uh, nuclei. That's called a smudged cell. Okay, so as you look at this day and particular image, I'm going to stay share with you. We are looking for the change of the numbers and shape of the cells because then these day numbers and the shapes of the cells usually are quite linked with these uh, particular diseases. So ask all this uh, preview of this to talk. And um, to formulate this the talk, I'm going to share this outline of the talk with you. And we're going to start from the research problems and followed by the number of the related works that we can find from the literature. And then I'm going to give the remarks because and we are not going to use work on over the different say, areas or different day and topics. We're going to focus on something. So this uh, remarks is going to give you clear guidelines of what we want to talk about in this uh, particular um, communication. And after, afterwards, I'm going to introduce uh, some uh, deep learning architectures, which has been uh, developed in our research team, and uh, mainly focused uh, on, uh, on some particular uh, disease. And afterwards, I'm going to stay and evaluate uh, our proposed uh, on deep learning architecture, and followed by the, uh, the other uh, topic we call this uh, cell lines authentication, which is important in the commercial state uh, company or exercises. 
finally, so I'm going to give you the uh, take home the message. And to kick off this uh, talk, and I'd like to present this uh, research problems the first. And um, as we know, the convention, conventional the way is to place this as me, and we already mentioned this as me as uh, before. And we wish to place this as me and under the microscope, and then we count the cells the manually. This is what we do traditional way. And however, we do understand that if you carry on this traditional step, smear the testing, you're going to spend a lot of time on this handling. And this is why we call this a time consuming. However, I'm not here to argue with you whether or not the menus, the smear the testing necessary or not, because um, different arguments, I know the, the story behind it. Okay. And also these um, and menus, the handling, they take a lot time, take a lot of the efforts. This is why we call this a labor intensive. And sometimes these day, uh, smear state testing or handling state, they get a wrong result because then you rely on someone, then that guy then sometimes has to, you know, get some time with rest, or maybe at that particular time, he or she is not in the good mood, and then they got something wrong. Therefore, we need a computer aided system to help us to deliver the efficient and accurate uh, counting, if you like. And one of the exercises in the um, in the community, and I'm sure that this is not a new problem. In fact, uh, many people, many groups have already done a good enough the work. When I say good enough work, that's the up to this the stage. Okay. So one thing we can find from the literature is that um, on the right hand side, you can see what happens. And I'm going to try this day one with the U, starting from A on top of this the figure. Okay, the left hand side is uh, they, they got these uh, blood samples coming in, and then they're going to prepare this uh, smear slide, and then they're going to uh, pass into this uh, UV imaging. And what happens there, they set up the UV the camera to make this um, um, smear um, to become the kind of the UV image. Okay, and once we got these uh, UV images and in the particular state wavelengths and in the particular state conditions, and then we move into um, the what we call this uh, segmentation stage. In this the case, they use the standards the uh, methods called the OSUS the method. This is the automatic and uh, fashioning the method. According to the different the intensity in the images, they can separate these uh, pixels or these uh, kind of the groups into the different uh, groups. Okay, and later on then. After this the segmentation of the images, and they put into the classification the stage, and this the classification stage is and uh, engage uh, the very traditional state classifier. They call this a support vector machine. Uh, this the support vector machine was built almost 30, 35 years ago. Okay, in fact, this is the outcome of our British community. And um, however, um, get the result from this uh, support vector machine. Um, it's useful, but it's not um, it, uh, it's not as uh, sufficient at this stage because uh, at the end of the day, we found the result from this the system that can't be generalized to different uh, condition, challenging the conditions. Okay. So this is one of the uh, uh, representative that works in this in the community. The other words that I like to just share with you is um, they use these uh, machine learning methods, and then the machine learning methods they can be applied and then combining the cell and segmentation, parasites, the detection, and then this the forces the problems there together. And the machine learning on top of these the slides, you can see A indicated the uh, samples of preparation and B indicating these uh, machine learning and algorithms or systems the set up and C indicated the output of the machine learning system. And here's um, what, I, what I can see is um, the applied deep learning architecture plus the transfer learning. Well, this is a passport transfer learning. Okay, I'm sure that if you work on the machine learning side, and you, you're going to get these uh, transfer learning uh, many, many times per day. Okay, And then when these guys they apply these uh, um, deep learning residues and neural network, networks with the transfer learning, then they can then qualify the parastemia. And then they build up this the CI, IBC the stage. I don't know what is the IBC stage here it means. Uh, I'm sure that the people that are working in the uh, medical science, they can give us some uh, tutorials on this. 
but I, I guess that is that what they try to say here, they want to separate the, these the, uh, cells into the different waves. Okay. Like according to the textures and shape and colors. Um, number three, again, they use the um, convolutions, the neural network, and then perform this uh, blood cell counting on this uh, blood cell smears, uh, images. On the right hand side, and sitting on top of this the figure, we have the images comes in, and then according to the different mask, and here's that we set up the marks for the RBC and WBC and parents and so on and so forth. And then according to the different mask, we can uh, segment the different uh, cells in the image. And eventually, this the software is able to running on a low cost embedded electronics and microcomputer. And, and in these mornings, then our colleagues already explained how this uh, uh, micro state electronics works. And that's a beautiful state and the state of the art in the community at the moment. And um, number five, and um, this is a number of, uh, number four state systems that we collect from the literature. And um, on top of it, they say, uh, this is the slides, then most of the left hand side, we have these uh, images, they call these uh, DIC images. Um, it looks like they're 3D, but it's not 3D, okay? And when we have these uh, DICs, the images coming in, then we use uh, the deep learning stand and architectures, the VGG, to produce the features. Uh, these are kind of features, including the shape and times, the edge and so on, uh, uh, colors and edges. And then we use the random forest uh, classification to classify the features from this uh, VGG system. And eventually, then we conduct this uh, image segmentation on the stage the three. Finally, they provide this uh, script and which the which areas they uh, indicate the the uh, the boundary and so on and so forth. So as you can see, then this is the four. Uh, systems I collected from the um, community literature. And um, I'm sure that you can find a many, many like this. Um, the reason that why I collect these four because I found they are quite typical and they represent the current state of the art. And um, I'm sure that you can find the others that people are working as well. And then I think they now is come to the remarks. The remarks is quite important, as I mentioned before. It's going to um, share the ideas and, and with you, what kind of these topics that we want to proceed um, in our particular uh, research. And here's that uh, we know so it's established the technologies that may only work on the specific the cases. And as you see, and in the last uh, four uh, examples, why do people apply the different uh, machine learning algorithms to, uh, to similar cases? That means that whether or not this uh, established uh, technology only working on one particular case, so this is a question mark. And um, the second, a second point I'd like to share with you is that most of the available technology requires a careful data cleaning and, and before we put into the machine learning and careful state cleaning. And I'm sure that the people say from the backgrounds of the machine learning AI, they know what happens here. Why we need this clean data? Because we want to train the machine learning model in the standard way and also push this data and standards the machine learning into the working system. And also, we also understand there's a large data set that it should be required for training and testing. And finally, finally, I'd like to share with you, and because this topic is just so diversified and there's so too many topics out there, and we are not today just working over the different areas, we focus on motivate this to work on this uh, nuclei and cell detection because the uh, nuclei and cell detections is a very important state uh, indicator of whether or not and we have seen the such uh, disease the cell or kind of the cells with the disease, things like that. Okay. And before I um, proceed into the couple of step project we conducted before, and I'd like to still give you a heads up and um, in this case, I compare the uh, blood test and histologist images in terms of the difference in the nuclei and cell detection. And um, we actually haven't worked on this uh, blood test before. We only stay put our efforts in the histologist images in the last five years time. So um, here's, I need to make sure, make these announcements. Uh, 
rather than then I, I, I am going to argue with you later on because and you're going to argue with me, Joe, you haven't worked on the blood test before and why you said that your strategy, your systems there related to the histo histologies, the images that can be working on the blood test. So I need to make sure you, you understand where we come from, okay? So as you can see, so on the screen, I have the two images. The top right-hand side, this is related to the particular um, blood test sample. And the, the bottom, the left-hand side is related to the histologies image, okay? So they have a very similar the patterns in the image. And however, they also got the individuals that um, carry characteristics, okay? The reason why they show these the two images then I want to point out is um, some of the uh, similarities uh, across these the two images and we developed the strategy for histologies, the images. However, somehow later on, we can uh, transfer the technologies we collect from the histologies analysis to the analysis of the blood test. Okay. So the, one of the ideas, one of the projects we used to work on is called is, um, and we apply this uh, anchor box, the anchor box that right? for those people that uh, do not have this day uh, and backgrounds in machine learning, the anchor box is a bounding box. Okay, bounding box. What happens here that we have the bounding box and to search in the image. Okay, we move this uh, bounding box in the image and try to find out which areas that uh, has the highest score in terms of the similarity uh, between the current state image, the current block, uh, current state areas against um, the, the templates that we already uh, uh, connected before, okay? So on the right-hand side is that what we want to find out is we want to find out which area is the uh, nuclei, which one is the cell, okay? So you're going to move this uh, bounding box uh, along the entire image and then find out what is the best, what is the best size, the best uh, the, um, areas can be fit into the individual uh, nuclei or cells, structures, okay? So this is what we do. Um, so, sorry, I, I show these uh, deep learning architectures to you. I don't meant to do, to do that because uh, it engaged uh, some of the machine learning things the inside, but I try to say, make this easy for you. And um, what we have the, on the left-hand side, we have the images coming in. This is a histopology, uh, histopology state, uh, images. And then we have the CNN, this uh, convolutional uh, neural network, and then we produce the features after this is CNN. Once we get the uh, features and then we send it into the couple of blocks and the convolution again, and then the features vector. Once we get this the features array, then we move into, uh, we use a regression the module to produce the uh, bounding box. And as I said before, it's an anchor box, uh, okay? Once we get this uh, anchor box, we compare the result of the colors, the bounding box against the ground truth. Then we produce the, what we call this, uh, Lost uh, of a location, loss of a location. Once we got this uh, loss of a location, then we move on and um, based on the outputs of the bounding box, and then we apply the embedding layer. The embedding layer means that uh, we have to do the convolution again. And then this uh, convolution is going to help us to build up the loss of embedding. So this is the second loss. This is the second loss. And once we get this uh, second loss, we proceed our systems are uh, handling, moving into the classifier. Moving into the classifier, then we got this uh, confidence that array produced the final loss. They call this a uh, uh, loss of the similarity or classification. So we use this uh, three different loss, location, embedding, and then classification losses in order to build up the result, whether or not the columns the, um, local areas is the one we are looking at for nuclei or cell structure, okay? So this is a evaluation of the current state deep learning architecture. And we use the um, data sets that from the Mikhaisa 2018. And this is the thousands of images we're testing. As you can see, we use the green um, bounding box to localize these um, um, cells and the, the nuclei in the images. And I'm sure that they, you can find us the um, roughly our system, they can find out this uh, nuclei in the images. And however, I need to uh, point it out that sometimes we got a false the positives as well. And on the screen, as you can see, the yellow color state bounding box um, 
localized some um, antigenous areas, which is not belonging to the nuclei or cells. What happens out there? Because then the shape of these areas looks so similar to the um, standard the nuclear structure. Okay. So that means that our system still needs to be improved. Um, this one is to show you the comparison um, between our system against the others. Uh, sitting on the bottom, and um, that, that's our the system's name, SRPN, compared to other people's the work, and we achieved a um, very good result. The accuracy is quite high, um, around 85%. Um, that's for the, our uh, first uh, uh, system of crossover projects related to deep learning architecture. Now I'm going to move into the second project, which is called a cell line authentication. For the people who are not familiar with this, the cell line authentication, the cell line means that we uh, put some of the cell groups into the different uh, production line um, for the particular the purposes. And sometimes we found that some people uh, they miss the handling this uh, cell line, and they mix up the one cell line they uh, cells with the others. Uh, one of the ways that to uh, make this the straight is that they have used this on the um, particular the and um, methods to handle to identify which the cells belong to the which cell line. They do that way. However, this way is a need time and also need the special equipment. They call it STR. And in this case, what we want to do here, we work closely with the AstraZeneca, um, as you know, it's one of the biggest uh, drug company. And um, we wish to use the image-based um, AI system to identify which the cell line is going to be um, in line with the, which the cell, so and so forth. And on the screen, I show you the three different cell line, and I put it into the three different rows. And A431 and A549 and then A47D. These are three different cell line. And then in, in the columns, I show you the different and times 24 hours, 48 hours, and 72 hours for the different day cell line. Uh, probably the, the people say who seem to be fine and will not see this clearly because the light. And what happens here, as long as the, we move in this the cell line into the different time, then you can see the structures or the uh, aggregation of the cells uh, become the uh, different, different shape or different layout, okay? And for the AI people, the opportunity is that you're going to design a new system to identify, okay? For this um, A431, this is a particular cell line, doesn't matter if the 24 hours or 72 hours, you need to identify all these three images that belong to the cell line A431. Um, this is a, one of the challenges we need to do. The other challenge is that we need to make sure the cell line A431 is different from the A549. But if you take a closer to these images, you found they have a very similar the patterns in the images. It's quite challenging to do. So what we're going to do is, and then we have the proposed uh, some um, deep learning architectures here, um, because of the time I'm not going to um, uh, give the much detail here. Um, we put into the, the images, original images, um, into the, um, what we call this um, deep learning architectures. And here we call the CLC net. And this is CLC nets that have a different uh, architecture against the tradition of the CNN. And then these the deep learning architectures will allow us to identify the different uh, cell lines, okay? So if you wish to know the details about these uh, technical uh, aspects that please uh, get in touch of mine. Um, the outcomes, they're quite promising. As you can see, they, I, I show you the, on the screen, this is a 30 different uh, cell lines, and we use this uh, TSNE is the output, and what is a TSNE? That's kind of the high dimensionality the information projected to the 2D dimension. Okay. So you can see on the screen, different colors indicate a different uh, cell line. We have the 30 the different cell line. They should have the 30 different uh, colors indeed. And if you, if you have time, you can count one by one whether or not we got the 30 different colors on the screen. I'm sure it is. Okay. So in fact, that our results are quite promising. We achieved the 96% increase occasionally and a couple of the percentages the most. 
Um, this one is to show you the classification and regression of result. Um, if you talk about the accuracy and precision, you see this uh, 96 to 97, and so on so good. And for the 14 and cell lines, um, we achieved the 96 and 97 accuracy. For the 30 cell lines, that we got uh, almost 100%. So that's the technical aspects that i am discussed and so far. I'm going to leave the more time for you um, to question me and if you find anything interesting here. Um, but before that, then if you want to take home, you need some take home message, then what we have here, and we explain the blood test and the blood test used under microscopy and what we do is and what we usually do. And then we also introduce the relevant works that for the cell ident identification. And in fact, that I introduced the four systems then established in the community. And then later on, I introduced then a couple of the deep learning architectures for nuclei cell detection and cell lines authentication. Okay, so that's the, my job. I, I appreciate the support from AstraZeneca and the Chinese CSC program and University of Alaska to support our works there for the last couple of years. Thank you very much there for your listening.